everyone, welcome to uh, the third, fourth team meeting of the month. I think it's the fourth, third? Third. Third. The third team meeting of the month. Um, we are, uh, this is a, a regular, regularly occurring meeting that we do every week to kind of uh, give an update on what we're working on, talk about uh, all of our metrics, you know, how the business is doing, how we're doing, and then of course, um, you know, talk about any challenges that we have. Uh, for anyone who is live participating with us, either in text or on Discord, please note that this is being recorded and streamed live. If you don't consent to that, please don't talk either in text or on uh, in, in voice. Um, so everyone welcome, say hi YouTube, and then we'll get going here. Right, nobody can spell YouTube apparently. All right, and then one day when Glimish has videos, it'll be on Glimish, but we'll see. Just kidding, don't, don't, we're not, <laughs> we're not committing to that at this time. All right, let's get started. Uh, so we're doing the, the new format again, which is the, um, the PowerPoint. So we'll start off with our weekly metrics. These are numbers that we cover every week. They're pretty public already, but we like to, uh, we like to actually track them. Uh, it is in light mode, so you have to avert your eyes temporarily to get used to the color. Um, but we like to keep track of these numbers just because they are things that we can change each week. Um, and you know whether we're doing social promotionals or whether we're just launching a new feature, we want to see how that impacts our numbers. So the first kind of types of numbers that we track are the, uh, the social media stats. Um, so we had a pretty slow week last week, and if I did my math correctly, of uh, 33 new users on Discord, 59 on Twitter, um, seven on Reddit, two on Instagram, and six on Facebook. Uh, we actually didn't tweet too much last week, but we did do a couple of retweets, which should get some good traction. Um, but we didn't kind of like we didn't reach any new audiences last week, I, I should say. From a user's perspective, we went out, we went up about 343. And then for apps, we are at zero. So let me, hold on, wait. Did I do the math right? One, one, two, three, two, minus 10, eight, eight, two. I forgot to update those numbers. So we're at 350 for users, sorry. And then for apps, we're at zero. Zero new apps. And then on MRR, which is monthly recurring revenue. Remember, we're still testing right now, but these are real transactions. We are down. Uh, we're down a subscription, which is uh, $25. All right, who did it? No, it's, it's fine. Anyone can do whatever they need. Uh, you look on the right over here. Uh, this is our recurring subscriptions graph. Um, you can see it's mostly plateaued. For now, what we'll do is, uh, you know, we're not going to let anyone, anyone more into the subscription test pool. But once we go live here, you know, early 2021, um, this number should actually start to to, to rise each week, and it'll track not only streams, but also platform subscriptions. And then the platform user growth, you can see is a nice uh, nice curve going upwards. Um, like I said, though, you can kind of see this down tick that we're currently in. Below is the Stripe Financials dashboard. Um, like I said, 290 on the M MRR, and then uh, most of these numbers are useless so far, so. We'll review this as we launch, though. I think it's a little bit, a little bit more interesting. All right, uh, the uh, win for the week, or I guess one of the wins for the week, it's huge. We actually launched a brand new uh, support email and support website. Now we already had the support website, but um, this is, you know, it, now it's fully coming into, uh, into, to production, if you will. Um, not only is it the place to go for all kinds of questions that you may have, but also any kind of support that you may need. And then in addition, you can email our new support email, which is support at glimish.tv, which will actually get you now to a group of people to answer, uh, you know, who can help you with your account or help you with any questions instead of just my email. So that's that's really nice. And actually we had, uh, we, we transitioned that on Sunday, which was two days ago, because today's Tuesday. Um, and we had a ticket submission, I think the next morning. And then actually uh, Chris was the first person to tackle that and get it accomplished and resolved in no time at all, which was really awesome. Uh, and then we actually had another one right after that that I think Molten Llama helped with. So uh, it's great to see people already helping out, the GCT already helping out, 
and really kind of taking that burden off of my shoulders, which I'm really thankful of. But then also, um, you know, being able to help our users in their own languages, in their own time zones. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be a really great thing to have. And if you want to go to it, it's just support.glimish.tv. And then uh, if you want to talk to only me, you can just Discord me. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nick is now. If you, uh, if you email support at glimish.tv, they can change your name now. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, the next thing I want to show off is a quick live demo. Uh, this is very close to production. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited for it. It's actually a uh, tags demo. So this is a local environment of Glimish, you can see here. Uh, and what will happen now is if you visit the you know gaming tab, for example, there you know, this is a very rough design. So everyone bear with me here. This is literally no no design elements at all, no design related people looking at it, just clone coding, random bullshit. So, but this is kind of the functionality that you can expect. Um, so whenever you visit the gaming streams now, what you'll see at the top is all of the tags that are currently live, that are currently being used. It'll be ordered by, I think right now, um, the number of uses. So, you know, of course there are more WoW streamers on Glimmerish than any other types of streamers at the moment. So, of course that one's the most populated. And then whenever you click on these tags, it'll give you a way to immediately filter down that content to exactly the tag you're looking for. And then if you want to, you know, clear that and go look at the other streamers, you can do that too. And then, um, you know, if you click on it again, you'll you'll see the, the the limited streamers. And then over here, when you go to the actual channel, you'll be able to click on those tags as well, which will take you back to that filter. You know, so if you're on a World of Warcraft stream and you love the content, of course, you only watch World of Warcraft because you're a giant nerd. Uh, you can immediately click on other WoW streams, go visit them. And then our tag system would allow you to also make it more specific. So instead of just being WoW, it could be WoW Classic, it could be WoW PvP, it could be World of Warcraft, it could be uh, you know this private server, whatever it is, um, it'll uh, it'll allow you to actually filter down to that exact content that you want. And the great thing about tags is that you, anyone, can create them. Now this is a dev environment, so you're going to see my stream key, but this is fake, so don't even worry about it. But down here in the tag section, you'll see um, not only all the tags that you can use, that other people have used, but also it'll contain uh, how many times it's been used. So you know if you're searching World of Warcraft, okay, let's actually do a live demo here. <clears throat> you know if you're searching WoW, it'll be the, you know, the top one and not the second one, right? Because there's 15 uses for that, so it's very popular. Uh, and then you'll be able to select it. And then let's say you're doing something brand new, something that, you've, uh, that no one else is using, um, you know, let's say Counter-Strike. You can actually add that in real time to your tags. And then when you go back to gaming, you'll see Counter-Strike. So it's all real time, it's all super fast. Um, the tags are created by the community and they're also sorted by community and pruned by the community. And so what that means right now is that uh, the more tags are used, the higher they show up and, and like filtering, the higher they show up on the uh, the tag list. And then if a tag gets too unused, it'll actually just kind of fade from vision. And then if someone goes in and recreates it, then it'll of course, you know, be allowed to, to populate again. Uh, and then, you know, if there are any content issues, if the tags don't make sense or they're, uh, you know, inappropriate, we do have a, a GCT who will uh, ban your ass just like they would if you made your title or your content something inappropriate. So, of course, the, the rules of Glimish apply even for the tags. So that's, that's the tag system um, as it is today. We'll add a couple more features later, um, but by giving the community the control of the tags, it also kind of helps us uh, really start to curate the types of content that's showing up on Glimish. And one thing I forgot to mention is the tags of gaming, you know, World of Warcraft, Counter-Strike, those don't affect the, ca the tags of music. And so if you're over in the music stream, let me share this off here, go to the settings page again. The tags for music don't interact with the tags of gaming. So if we click that, we actually see, you know, we've hip hop, we've rap, you know, whatever, whatever else people make. And then once you update that, you'll see on your music, boom, there you go. Uh, if anyone has any questions that aren't exactly related to the topic, we're going to um, we're going to answer questions at the very end of the stream here. So give it a couple of minutes, and then we'll we'll help you out. Uh, and it's yeah, I'm they're limited by the category. Them. 
Say what? I'm copying all the questions. I'm trying okay. to. Okay, cool. Do tags support translations? No. <laughs> Not right now. Later. I don't know how, even how to do that. <laughs> so I can't even think about how I do that. I can't even imagine what that even starts to look like at this time. What about tags that aren't category specific, such as family friendly? We do. Um, yeah. So we're, we are going to have also the system of uh, global tags, which are the things that are more, um, you know, more general than just like a gaming category tag. So things like family friendly, things like, uh, you know, uh, what, what's the whole acronym? L G B Q T I A plus. Is that the whole thing? Did I miss something? If I miss something, I apologize. But you know, even tags like that would be allowed to be a part of the global community. That way, um, you'll be able to find the streams you want. Uh, you know, who kind of match the communities that you want to interact with. And exactly like a veteran tag, that would be something that's global because no matter you know where you stream, whether it's gaming, tech, music, IRL, you know, you're still a veteran. It's still your personality. It's still who you are. Uh, there somebody is somebody asked your. Oh, sorry. Go, Go ahead. ahead. I think you were about to read it. Does the stream halt when you uh, navigate from a when you navigate to a tag from a stream page? Right. Yes. Yeah. So it will, it will it will pause the stream. There's no like picture in picture or anything. So as soon as you leave the tab, it'll stop playing that stream. There's one more question up here, um, Kimisobe. I'd like to talk to you afterwards. Um, I'm trying to figure out what interface you're talking about exactly. So we'll chat afterwards. You're not in trouble. That was not a principal's office type of comment. I was just curious, actually. Ooh. It sounded like it. I just see you after class, Kimasobe. All right. We'll keep moving here. So that's the tags preview. Uh, yes, Nick is now. You'll be able to play multiple streams and multiple tabs. All right. So some other ones. Um, I'll start off on the left here. Um, we actually have been working on this for several weeks, and it's really starting to take shape. Uh, the Janus refactor, which Hayden has been working on, kind of is a, a complete, you know, when you're writing software, generally the stages are you fucking punch your keyboard and uh, and get a shit done and it works, but it's not the most attractive thing or it makes it hard to test or it's, you know, not always uh, performant in all the areas. And then as you, you know, progress, you start to really kind of clean it up and polish it and smooth it. So now we're in that, that, that phase of polishing and smoothing on, on Janus, which is kind of where FTL is. That's where it runs our FTL. And we're actually reaching a really good point now where it's not only compiling, which is very good for C++ code, but it's also running, which are apparently two different things. Um, and so that's that's some good news. The second thing is that uh, Ember has actually fixed some of the uh, content bugs we had. Uh, there was a, a case where if you made a table inside of your profile, it would actually expand past the width of the content, look really ugly and be awful. And Ember was uh, gracious enough to fix that. We also fixed a bug with image uploadings for avatars and, and wherever else you can upload images, where it was rejecting files that weren't called, you know, dot lowercase png. That is fixed now. And then um, the emails, this was actually another community contribution. The emails now come from Glimish. It actually used to come from before support at Glimish or no reply at Glimish. Now it's just Glimish. It's us. And then the uh, the next thing here, you probably are looking at it right now, but we decreased the size of the video padding a lot. So it actually makes the video player look a lot better. There is some weirdness right now because I am streaming at 16 by 10, and this is a 16 by 9 container, uh, which is a bug that we need to fix. But what it allows us to do is that whenever it goes into a mobile size, which is much smaller, it allows the video to take up more of the content, and uh, these viewer counts and um, these viewer counts and follow buttons actually get a little bit smaller too. That way, it works much better on mobile. Now we still have a whole another mobile design to actually do. Uh, just Simi has been kind of designing the, the wireframes for those now. Uh, sorry, Simi uh, has been designing the wireframes. But uh, for now, that'll get us by, and then in the future, we'll come back and, and kind of 
actually put a real coat of paint <clears throat> on the mobile app, well, mobile website. <clears throat> I am dying, one second. <laughs> oh, the old lean and sip. After not talking for so long and then talking like the entire time. <clears throat> The lean in step? Yeah, you gotta hide your your mouth. You don't wanna broadcast your straw mouth. That's how you get photoshops. All right, and then the last thing here that I wanted to, to uh, talk about was that uh, Simi's been working on um, kind of trying to understand our SEO a little bit more. I think there was a case where you could actually search uh, Glimish launch date on Google in this live, and then it would it like give you not quite the accurate response. Um, and so we are, we've are we been focusing on SEO for a little while here to try and uh, try and take back some of these pages. And so Simi's been doing research on uh, what kind of keywords are appropriate for us, what, um, what you know, has the most amount of searches, what kind of has the most amount of competition. And so this will give us a good kind of uh, idea on how to modify our pages to, to be a little bit more reputable on Google. All right, and then we actually have a brand new um, we have a brand new section here that we haven't included before. Uh, this is kind of our first foray into, into this type of slide. But what we want to talk about now is uh, other business partnerships that we're working on, um, and these are other companies who we respect the values of, who have um, you know their communities and the best mind possible. Other people who we want to work with and support, but we also want to kind of, uh, you know, uh, get some value trade off of. And so we look for companies that have the right kind of morals, the right kind of product that makes sense in our market, and that aren't trying to, you know, uh, be a pyramid scheme to the users. And QuickDrop has been the first one so far that's really kind of uh, flushed out that relationship with us. QuickDrop is a brand new gaming newsletter. Um, and if you're familiar with uh, uh, Morning Brew, that's a, a kind of another newsletter. Morning Brew is a, a very popular, like startup news, stock news, uh, corporate news type newsletter that you get every, every single day. It kind of gives you a quick, um, a quick daily brief of what's happening in the world. And QuickDrop is looking to do that same exact thing with gaming instead. So with gaming and streaming and all sorts of other types of related content, they want to give you a newsletter in your email that will kind of shorten the time it takes to get caught up for the day. You know, you can check your email on your, on your phone when you're using the bathroom in the morning, and you can immediately get all the hits, all the news, and uh, keep moving. So we actually are officially sponsoring, or we're officially partnering with QuickDrop. Quick Drop. Um, and what that will include over time, not immediately, but over time, is bi-directional promotions. So we'll be able to kind of promote ourselves in their newsletter. They'll be able to kind of promote themselves on Glimish. And I don't want to say advertise because we're not really advertising. It's more, um, you know, synergy is the word to use for it. But it's, it's not going to be like a quick drop ad dropped on the page. What it will be is maybe some content or maybe uh, you know the top 10 gaming streams that are powered by QuickDrop. So it'll be more of a kind of uh, experience, if you will, than just an advertisement. Uh, we'll also do sponsored events, both collaboratively, and then also we'll kind of you know name drop each other when we're doing uh, when we're doing cool events. We'll do newsletter posts, both in their newsletter and then uh, you know kind of on our pages, and then Glimmer streams, of course. We'll be able to do quick drop Glimish streams, hopefully, but then also, you know, maybe a championship that's hosted on Glimish by Quick Drop. So there's tons of options. It's going to be really cool. This is kind of our, uh, you know, our revenue model approach besides subscriptions. We're looking to partner with other companies and providers who offer like services and then be able to use that as like mechanisms for, you know, <laughs> value transfer. So with QuickDrop right now, we're kind of focused on, um, you know, helping each other grow. So we both want to keep growing. Uh, but then over time, you know, hopefully we can translate that into, you know, more of a meaningful business partnership. And then as always, uh, if you are a business or a platform and you want to work with us, reach out and let us know. And then the last thing I did, I, I wanted to do was uh, QuickDrop is actually launching pretty soon, which is really cool. 
Um, you know, we're, we're not launched yet, which is, that's, they kind of beat us to the punch, which is fine, which is fine. Um, but they're actually launching on February 1st. So if anyone's interested, quickdropmedia.com, um, gaming newsletter, you can unsubscribe, you can subscribe, they support all that. And they, they're not, from all of our conversations, they're not spamming. They're not gonna spam you, it's just a, a, a newsletter. You don't think coffee will fit in a Glemish? That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. That is, Paco, get him. Dude, I love coffee. Almost as much as I love whiskey, and that says something. Like, I don't think Glemish would exist if it wasn't for coffee. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, right? let's keep coffee here. and whiskey. Well, yeah, you got to put the whiskey in the... Well, actually, yeah. you have to have the coffee-flavored whiskey that you put in your morning coffee. Exactly. It goes together like Glemish and Quick Drop Media. Ooh. All right, and then the next section we like to talk about is... Um, <laughs> I have affiliations with three coffee companies. That is, you have a problem. You are addicted. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a problem at all. <laughs> All right, uh, and then the next one here is ongoing challenges. We like to talk about these. Um, this first one's coming up more and more frequently, uh, which is, of course, expected. Um, but the general feel is that there are there's a lot of information to learn about supporting um, <laughs> other countries, You know, both being able to accept money from those other countries, but then also being able to give money to people in those other countries. And the complexity comes be, you know, from governments, because governments want their cut. Uh, and we actually use a payment provider called Stripe, which gives us instant access to pay out to 40 countries. And that's gonna be who we use when we launch. Now, we still haven't exactly figured out for all of those 40 countries, how their tax rules work, what kind of tax forms we need to issue. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things we need to figure out. But at the moment, the US is the only one that is fully stamped as completed. We are getting closer and closer to uh, Canada and the UK. I actually have to implement one more feature to make that happen before it, before it works. Um, and then we'll be able to test out the UK, Canada, and then several other European countries. So. We are working on this before we launch, but I do want to keep saying that, you know, the U.S. is the only stamped country at the moment. We will be working to add more. Hopefully, we can support all 40 countries before launch, not North Korea. Sorry. It's not allowed. Sorry. South Korea, totally fine. North Korea, not allowed as much. Not so much. Uh, and then um, the next item here is, of course, music copywriting. Uh, this is a big problem in the industry today. Uh, it's been a, a kind of a sleeping giant for a while, and it's now coming to uh, rear its ugly head. It's always existed, you know, since we've been on the internet, uh, but you know, now is where it's coming to hit us. And so, what we want to help do to kind of challenge this and, and make this easier for our streaming community to understand is we want to give you the, the resources and the tools to understand what a DMCA is and how you deal with it. Um, we actually did a recent post here. I'll show you just again, uh, glimish.tv slash about slash DMCA. It covers not only kind of DMCA in general, but also what is a copyright? And then how does this apply to you? Um, what, what does Glemish have to do? How do we have to uh, handle complaints and disputes? And then what rights do you have to combat it, to, to fight back, to understand? And then at the very bottom, we also include resources. Um, this is another kind of call to action. If you're representative of a music conglomerate like Stream Beats or Monster Cat, someone that's not an individual, but you represent multiple people, let us know. We'd love to get your name on here. Uh, we'd love to kind of promote you anytime people are looking for, um, for, for new content. It is worth noting that Stream Beats totally ignored my email when I asked them if, if I could put them on here, but their license didn't prohibit it, so I went with it. <laughs> they don't get any special combination though for ignoring my email. We'll put them on here at the jerks. If there was anyone else, I probably wouldn't have included them, but there was no one else here to list, so. Hmm. Damn, that's a long time away. Nah, right around the corner, dude. 
the DMCA, DMCA page is translatable. So as soon as uh, we push the translations to, um, what do we use? What's it called? To uh, PO order. editor, we'll, uh, you'll be able to translate these. So they're all translatable. That way we can put this in your own local language. Boom, look at that, working. Yeah. All right, and then we'll keep going here. Uh, the last one we wanted to, to bring up now is a quick video. Um, so this is one of our um, one of our custom Glimish projects that one of our community members is working on. This one is called uh, uh, Cameo Labs. And what they finished this week was a really cool um, video that we're gonna watch in QuickTime apparently. Okay, this is not OBS. It looks like OBS, but it's it's not mine. It's actually their video. So, we're gonna watch here. Mhm. Mm it's coming up. Hold your horses. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, look at that! A follow notification in real time when uh, when Dan Wire clicked follow on the other page. So uh, we now have a community project that actually has stream alerts in it. Super awesome. I don't know if there's anything else here. Let's look. Oh, there you go. Boom. Nice. Oof. Oh, and you can see it's a little container you can move around. Cool. So that's awesome work. Uh, if, you're, if you're not seeing this content, make sure you look at our Glimish-projects channel, which is down in the community section. Uh, you'll have to talk to them. I have no idea. That's from uh, Cameo Labs. Cameo? Cameo. Cameo. Cha Mio. Loves. Dear God, just stop. <laughs> I think that's my favorite type of humor. When, whenever uh, like someone on TV is trying to pronounce something, it's just ridiculous. All right. I don't know if I have another slide after this, actually, so I'm going to click. Oh, okay. And then roadmap update. Uh, this is the same exact thing as last week. No progress on payment controls. No progress on Steam stream stability mitigations yet. More to come soon. All da, right. Da, 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 da. And with that, that is the Glimish team meeting. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll open it up to any questions and answers that anyone had. Um, so if anyone had any questions throughout that they forgot to ask or that were, wasn't exactly related, feel free to ask those now. Uh, before we do that, I want to thank everyone who stopped by on YouTube. We'll see you later. Actually, see you next week on Tuesday when we do this again. 7 p.m. Eastern at glimish.tv.